Hey, what is up, guys? Tyson Dela Cruz here at the Real Estate Experts Podcast. Have you ever wondered what type of mindset, training, coaching, and accountability is required to become the best wholesaling and house flipping acquisitions manager? Well, if you are, this is the show for you. Guys, I have an amazing guest on today, Robert Sadowski, owner and operator of NLS Homes and the only franchise, only local franchise owner of Keegley. Roll the intro. Welcome to Real Estate Experts. Join us to democratize the secrets to real estate for everyone, everywhere. Thank you for being here. Let's see what our experts have to say today. Hey, what's up, Rob? How's it going? Thank you so much for joining me, man. Tyson, thank you for the invite. It's always a pleasure seeing you. Kind of yes, the reason why I'm always, in this. You're, you're always, uh, you're always a sexy face, man. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I can't be as good as you, but you know we all try. <laughs> um, for people that don't know you, man, can you give a brief introduction, a uh, little background, history, how you got into real estate, and kind of where you're at today? Um. So basically. Uh, I started looking at real estate, getting into some real estate back in the uh, early 2000s with, um, I was in the casino industry, just like you, um, you, you kind of had left. You're actually one of the reasons why I'm this far and where I am today. Um, 2005 is when I started in the casinos, but then um, I started, I think I started like almost every other person you start watching the shows on, on A and E and all those little flip shows. And you're like, Oh my God, they're making all this money. And then you kind of get into it and you realize like, nah, that's not really the numbers, but, um, started kind of looking at things there, right. Started reading a lot of books, um, saving up some money, getting, um, into, uh, diving into numbers, really looking at what it takes to actually do the flips and stuff. 2010 came around, boom, had my triplets. That's awesome. Set me back about five, five, six years on my uh, my journey in real estate, but th but then uh, I got into it in 2016. Put about uh, 200 thousand in the bank and uh, started flipping with my own money. Flipped our first house in two weeks. Uh, I'm sorry, two months, and then uh, second house was done three months after that. We made a ton of money. Um, then had some some little. Uh, personal issues kind of dropped out for a little bit now i'm back in it full blair uh 100 work doing it every single day trying to make things uh kind of easy and for myself and my my team and building everything out now and i'm i'm 100 fo 110 focused in it so it's kind of my background awesome man i really appreciate you sharing that um so currently you're the uh only local franchise owner of keegley right yeah, correct. So there's there's four franchises as of right now for Keegley. Um, I am the only local one. The other three are are 100% virtual. Um, I go. It helps. It does help a little bit here and there with uh, shaking hands with investors and things like that. Um, going physically, walking the properties, and um, just being there with the wholesalers. Um, we work with a lot of wholesalers too. So um, those wholesalers, we have them meet right up at my Keegley office here. Um, we have them come in, meet us, uh, sit down. We kind of help them along and uh, kind of give them like more of a, a direction to go in when it comes to uh, getting properties and things like that. So it really does help being local. We work with a lot of agents as well. We're actually in a, a realty uh, um, real estate uh, office here. Um, a lot of the agents just come right up to me right here and uh, just send me, give me properties right here. It's kind of amazing, but it does help being the only uh, local franchise. If you guys ever want to come and visit, just stop by. I'm over in Green Valley. Come say hi anytime. I love it, man. I love it. Um, so in regards to your uh, transition over to like actually acquiring the franchise, um, I know it's been a journey. Um, how has it been since uh, you actually, you know, started diving in with Keegley Las Vegas? So Keegley is, uh, you know, the reason why I went with it was with Keegley is because um, the actual, like, they have the main foundation. It's still up to you as the owner to really put those things in motion, put the time into it, um, and to actually get things done and start building your team. But 
it's the systems that like you get and all the leads are kind of loaded up for you and then working those leads and then keeping those goals set and and building out from there so so keegley is is you get the name recognition anybody who's in this business knows keegley for for sure i i mean if you haven't you need to get on board they actually have their own uh tv show called triple digit flips i'm actually on the first episode of it but awesome. um but yeah again the, re the reason why i went into it is because it's um you could go so many different ways in real estate right you can go investors flips um wholesaling buy and holds airbnb i mean there's just so many different routes uh one of the biggest things is to stay focused in what you want to do don't go all through, you know 25 different ways and that's what keekly kind of does they have that system in there that keeps you focused on what you need to do to get things done in that wholesale wholesaling industry and and kind of that sfrs condos and stuff like that so it, it's basically you know they, they keep me on track with stuff awesome man i love that thanks for sharing that um you had mentioned a couple times systems right um yeah. keekly has some of the best systems um Tell me how important systems are in regards to scaling a wholesale business. It is, it, it's impossible to do without a system. Uh, you know, you need your CRMs, you need your communication, you need your operational type stuff. Uh, we use like, I'm sure a lot of people have heard this Podio. We use Slack for internal communications. We use uh, Zapier or Zapier, however you want to say it, for to connect everything in the background. So we use SendGrid or like, uh, some people use MailChimp to do uh, email blasting. Like these things are your CRM, whatever you're using for CRM, we use close.io. That is probably the first thing anyone needs. CRM, you have to keep track of your leads, have to keep track of who's looking at what house, how many you're sending them out to, how many people, you know, who you've talked to, who you got to get back with. There's just, you can't do it by yourself. You can't do it with a cell phone. You start off like that, 100%. You start off with your cell phone, sending out some text messages. But I mean, literally, I am, my acquisitions guys are four or 500 text messages, 150 phone calls every day. So it's, it's almost impossible. I would say the first thing you need is a CRM. Awesome. Awesome. So when it comes to a CRM, you had mentioned Podio. Um, so, you know, I'm not sure if that's a system that you use, you might use a proprietary system, but Podio is actually, you know, in my experience, it's a great free resource. Um, it's a blank slate. It's a good opportunity for people to get used to a CRM. If you don't have a lot of cash, you can use Podio as a, as a blank slate platform to at least get the ball rolling to track your leads. Yeah, 100%. I actually, so I use like six different systems. Podio is for my sales and inventory. And then I use Close for, um, for kind of my CRM. And then I use uh, SendGrid for blasting. I also use uh, Slack for communications. That's with my internal communications, my operationals communications, and my uh, corporate communications. So, and then we use Zapier connects everything in the background. So what a great, what a great gem you just dropped, man. You literally just gave like the whole system away, you know, <laughs> which is awesome. Um, you know, you, you would say, you would say that, but here's the thing, like you said, Podio comes blank slate. Yeah. You literally have to build out those things. And that's kind of where my corporate comes in and it's all set up. I'm, I'm pretty much a plug and play at that point. So it don't, I don't want to give anybody the impression you, you download Podio and you're off and running. No, there's a lot of work you got to put into that and a lot of things that go into it, but it's all doable. A lot of YouTube, a lot of reading books, reading their videos as well, too. I mean, they have a lot of uh, self-help videos on Podio and, and all the other websites to get you started if that's where you want to go. I love it, man. And you had mentioned a couple minutes ago regarding the amount of calls and text messages that your acquisitions team actually does. Um, how important it, it, is it to continuously track those numbers uh, and then kind of scale up those numbers in order to grow the business? So it's uh, it's kind of crazy. So one, one of the uh, biggest things is accountability for, for not just me as the owner, keeping my acquisitions guys on track, keeping their goals. Um, I, I tell my acquisitions guys this, you know, I, I have a certain pay that they that they make for kind of base pay. They are required to do a minimum amount of text messages, uh, phone calls, and so on and so forth 
um, and bring a certain amount of properties in. Um, with that being said, I each each acquisitions guy, I like to have a personal relationship with my employees. So when it comes to a personal relationship, I actually ask my employees, what is it that you want to achieve here? Not just the bare minimum or whatever it is, what do you or or in this job, but like what do you want to achieve in life? Like, do you want to make a half a million dollars? Great. You want to make a half a million dollars doing this job working in, in my company? This is what it looks like. So here's your base. And then you want to be somewhere around here. You want to be two, three, four times your base. That's great. But let's look at those numbers. Do you have to make a thousand phone calls a day to get to a half a million dollars? Is it possible? Do you think you can do it? Do you have the mindset? Are you going to be working seven days a week? Do you want to work 20 hours a day? Because that's what it's actually going to take. We actually put those numbers down. We um, we review them on, uh, well, actually, they're, they're responsible for their own numbers. So every Friday, they go through their own numbers. They put them down, and they're responsible for their own goals and meeting those goals. The following week is when we actually go through them. Every single morning, I have a team huddle. We go through everybody's numbers, what they want, what they need, where they want to be, and then what it looks like to get to those. So it, it is really up to um, the the person that, that themselves of where they want to be. And then it's my job. I believe it's my job as I run my business to get that person to that goal and make them understand what it actually will take, you know, I don't have any acquisitions guys coming in with unrealistic numbers. Hey, I want to make $25 billion a day. Yeah, well, that's not going to happen. You know, they're realistic. They are kind of high because everybody wants to reach for the stars and that's say, hey, that's great. Just understand what that takes. And if you're willing to get to that point, more awesome to you. Let's do it. Let's get it done. <clears throat> Love it, man. Um, regarding coaching and accountability, you mentioned the huddle every Friday. So I would say that that would be a form of accountability on top of any other additional meetings that you guys may have. What's, uh, what kind of layout would you recommend somebody just getting started to set up for their team regarding accountability and uh, coaching? So it's, it's all starts from the top. So if the owner or the person that's starting to set up team, if they don't have their own goals, then nothing will work. Um, so we have morning huddles every single day, 8.30 to 5. I'm sorry, 8.30 to 9, not 8.30 to 5. Um, I am in my office every day. I drop my kids off at school at uh, 7 o'clock. I'm in my office by 7.30. From 7.30 to 8.30 is when I'm sitting down writing out my morning huddles. And the morning huddle is uh, basically about the business and the overall not necessarily one particular person or where they are, where they're at, where they want to be. So as the owner, you really need to have that clear focus of where you want to go and lead your team. If you don't have that, don't start a team. Do not start. You need to be clear and focus on yourself. In that morning huddle, it is going over what the focus of your company is. So if you need to, if you want to have your team at a million dollars a year, that's great great numbers right there, then what does that look like spread out between how many people you need to hire, where you need to be at, where you need them to be at, if you can get them there, and if you can train them. When it comes to the individual person, when you're hiring team members, those are, again, their personal goals. Um, we have one-on-ones. It's always constant coaching, always going through uh, phone calls and like, hey, you know, we could have done this a little better or you didn't do this quite right. Um, but it's each individual has their own one on one. I coach every single morning, uh, listen to phone calls, go through text messages and reporting reportings. That's constant in my CRM. I can look up uh, they, they need to. One of the averages, I'll give you some actual insight, but uh, that I oh, think great. So they are a minimum requirement is uh, 300 text messages a day. That's the minimum requirement, but they have to average a 28.9% response rate. This is really going into the numbers here. So they're not sending crap. 
Exactly. Yeah. So, you, you, you know, you have a lot of stuff that people don't answer. They think, yeah, it's, it's just a robot sending them and all this. Here's, I'll give you another little gem. Someone responds to you on a, we call it initial outreach. Someone responds to you, you don't text back. You pick up the phone and call them. Great. That is, Great that is, that is huge. And these are kind of like the, I mean, these are just the basics of, of coaching and stuff. But if, if somebody is trying to build a team, that person who's trying to build the team needs to know where they want to be first. Do not start hiring people if you have no idea where you want to be, a clear path of how you're going to get there. You need to write some some, some type of business plan so at, at minimum, at minimum. So, and then you get to, t- and then the, the, the biggest thing is that is make sure you're somewhat successful yourself. So make sure you have success. Make sure your processes are working because if they're not, and you're not making money, you're going to bring somebody on. That's not, it's not going to work for them either. So make sure you have your processes working. That's one of the reasons for Keegley that has helped me along that process. Make sure those processes are working and you have them down. Not everybody knows everything hundred percent, but um, make sure you know enough where you can train somebody else to get to that same point that you are. And then that's when you start building. <clears throat> How important is the onboarding process and setting expectations off the jump? Um, so all out of the, out of the, I think everything starts from the interview. Again, I ask, I ask a few questions in my interviews, so some simple things like, uh, what's the, what's the thing that if you had, um, this is one of my favorite questions in an interview. What is the worst thing that you that you just absolutely hate doing? And even if the job paid you a million dollars a year, you would not sign up for it. Wow. The second question leading after that is what is the greatest thing that you love doing? And you would sign up for like twenty thousand dollars a year. You wouldn't mind doing it just because you love it that much. It's difficult, two difficult questions. You know, if they come, ah, I hate being on the phone. I hate talking to people. Yeah, you know, there's the door over there. Right. That's right, not right. what we do. But, yeah. you know, it's it's certain things like that. You also, one, one of the biggest things is culture. That is huge when setting up a team. It's it's going to be your company, your team. What is that culture? I've I visited many other Keegley offices and their cultures, and they're completely different. I go to one. They're screaming and yelling in the morning like it's the Wolf of Wall Street, and that's freaking that's awesome, 100% awesome. Like that's their culture. They love doing that. It pumps up their guys, and they get a lot of numbers done. I go to another one, and they're very relaxed. You know, morning meetings are very monotone-ish, but they're they're about the numbers, and that's how he runs his team. I'm kind of somewhere in the middle. I like taking my guys out. I like doing things for them. As a matter of fact. Uh, this is kind of funny. Wait, I got. I'll show you this. Hold on. Here you go. Just, just to show you. This is in my office. At all oh, times. Okay? love it. So the reason why this is in my office is because I ask my guys all the time. Hey, what, what, what do you like to eat? What, what snacks do you like? What, what do you, what do you want in the office? One guy says, I love pickles. So you know, it's in my, in my office at all time. Pickles. Okay. You know, you got to love your employees and, and, um, and just keep that culture. You know, that's my culture. Like I do whatever I can for my employees and, and my team to make them feel part of the family, make them, you know, like they have everything that they have, that they want here. If we do have bad months, they're like, there's still no way I'm going to work for anybody else. This guy is unbelievable. He takes care of me. I, I, um, we give out gift cards all the time for people who reach certain goals and, and, and this and, you know, just do things. Uh, I'll give you another example. One of my acquisitions guys loves to play the drums. Absolutely loves to play the drums. So I said, well, why don't you play anymore? Well, you know, I'm married. My wife doesn't want me playing the drums in the house and this and that. I said, well, what time does she work? So oh, nine to five, same as here. And I said, you know what? Every Wednesday, mandatory you got to leave two hours early to go home and play the drums before your wife gets there absolutely loves it comes to work with a smile on his face every single day loves coming in here wow. early every single day like that is that's a good. huge huge thing that's with good. <laughs> thanks that and, that's and that's good. a huge thing with setting up a team and setting up that culture for your team like love your employees 
want for them what they want for themselves and help them achieve that in in your you know area of expertise very much a, a selfless leader right yeah what well, yeah very you, much. You, you gotta you gotta do that for because you know i don't think i don't think ever one time in any of any of the casinos and you worked with i worked with you for years i don't think i've ever had my manager come up to me and said hey what is something that we can imp implement here in our workplace that you actually love to do or something that would make you happy nobody's ever said that to me ever <laughs> I would have loved for it to happen, but it just never happened, you know? Yeah. So, so I think that's something that everybody needs as a team leader and, you know, building their own business. I love that, man. Where did, have you always had that selfless, that selflessness? You know, I, I love giving back, you know, it's, I, I actually get some of it from you, believe mm. it or not. Every time, when I was first starting in flipping, I used to call you all the time there's one thing that you used to say to me all the time. And I was like, man, this guy Tyson, man, he's just, every time I got off the phone with you, you always said to me, I want to make sure I'm giving some value to you. I want to make sure that you're, you're getting something from this. And, and it's like, you were always giving back. You were always like willing to help. You met me out at properties all the time. Like, Hey, I think we should, this should be this or whatever it is like. And it's just, I know how that made me feel like, it wasn't like you had, you were making any money. There was no monetary value to that, or it was just you giving back. And I'm like, I know how that makes me feel. Why don't I help other people? And, you know, it just feels good. So that's, and that's kind of like, I, you know, I'm, I was born, raised Catholic, Christian now, and, you know, I'm all about the kids and things like that. So it's, you see people that are down and out. I always help. I'm always the guy giving people money at the corners when they tell you not to and this and that i'd rather buy them food but yeah well yeah like you just you know it's you got to give back 100 percent. yeah hey man thanks thanks for sharing that man uh that that really uh uh that really hit the spot man <laughs> <laughs> that really hit the spot um regarding mindset uh when it comes to some of these accusations when it comes to the accusations team uh, I know there can be months or times where, you know, they're dialing, they're texting and nothing's coming in on top of, you know, being a selfless leader. Uh, what other things do you implement in your company to provide uh, a solid culture and to keep these guys motivated with their mindset? Um, so so we start with what's called um, uh, prospecting pipeline and performance. That's the, that's the basis of how I start um, after training of systems and stuff. But um, the second week of training, we, before they even touch phones, anything like that, um, we set up their prospecting, um, what their, what their short-term goals are um, and understanding those. You have to make sure they understand what they're in for and that it is reachable. Um, once you get through those numbers, the second thing is your pipeline. Your pipeline, you know, coming down to what's coming in, keeping that pipeline full because you really start, anybody starts like this. You start your new job, you're like, I'm, I'm, this is awesome, I'm taking off. And then you realize your second month, it takes my, my acquisitions guys three months to bring in a single property. That's the average, that's the way it is. There's no other way about it. Those are the numbers, it just happens keeping your team like i was saying keeping your team doing just simple things asking uh if i if i go into my other guys uh acquisitions guys uh, desk over here there's always cheese it's and gummy worms <laughs> so what he likes ask your team members ask the guys you're hiring when you're when you're with them what is you you're you're got you're through your prospecting you're putting out everything you got your pipeline full and then you come down to performance and we're not seeing any properties okay well, let's go back and see what the holdup is. Did you do everything on your KPIs? Are you are are your scripts correct? Like, we focus on um, another big thing. One thing I tell people is, we don't focus on making money. We focus on building relationships. The money will come afterwards. 
Um, but if you if you make a if you have a great relationship with somebody, I meet I try to meet as many as I can, as many investors as I can, as many people that will that are out there door knocking. I try to help them out because the more I help them, the more more relationships I, I help them build, they work for me. You know what I'm saying? Like if I help somebody get a property and they make 20 grand off of it, what do you think they're gonna do with their next property? They're they're gonna bring it over to me. And it's not about the money, it's how you help somebody. So when we when we come to prospecting and pipeline, and the, and the last thing is performance, which is basically going back through those first two things and seeing where that kink is. Um, helping your acquisitions guys through that and understand maybe it's not, maybe your scripts are okay. Maybe you are setting up great relationships, but you're just not doing an out, enough outreach or Maybe you're, you have enough outreach and you're, you're just not talking to people correctly. Um, you're not actually being clear with people. Um, you know, there's, each one has to be evaluated individually and you have to have that one-on-one -on -one time with your employees. You literally have to sit down with them, ask them what, what, what they believe is the holdup. Uh, one of the other things too that I want to touch on is uh, helping not not just steering or educating your employee uh, or your team member, but helping them understand why it is you're telling them what they're. So instead of coming up to them and so like, let's say they got on the phone, they said something that you're like, eh, that's not quite right. Instead of just saying, hey, do this or this was wrong or whatever, instead of doing that, say, hey, listen to this phone call. We didn't get, the, you know, it didn't go quite the way you wanted to, but why do you think it was? Let them kind of figure it out on their own. And then when they do and they learn themselves, you got to congrat, you know, you got to be there with them, congratulate, like, hey, that's awesome. You know that. So keep that in mind for next time. Then they grow by themselves, you know, and that's part of like, and then actually coaching them to do that is kind of where the team leader comes in or the business owner. So there is a lot to it. I mean, I can go on for days with this. No, there was a lot of, there was honestly, man, there was a lot of nuggets in there. You know, you mentioned one-on-one -on -one several times and, you yep. know, morning huddles are super important. What, what's your recommendation for one-on-one -on -one huddles? Um, is it, you know, twice a week, once a week, every day? Like, what is it, what does it look like for one-on-ones? <clears throat> -on so one on really ones, though. Yeah. Uh, for one on ones, we uh, basically go back to the uh, performance part of um, prospecting pipeline and performance. So on Fridays, at the end of the day, they have a spreadsheet that they that they fill out themselves. And that's basically how many opportunities they're created, their call, their goals for their text, their offers, their verbals, their written um, calls out. Um, how many properties they brought in, um, just whatever your uh, goals for your team are. The one-on-one -on -one is kind of taking some, uh, what I do is, is kind of taking some of those phone calls, uh, going through those, whether it be good, bad, or indifferent, or just like, hey, that was a great call. Like, it doesn't, it's not always bad or you need to change or you have to have those good one-on-ones as well. Um, and going through that performance section of, okay, you said you wanted to be here, but you're actually down here. Based on your actions. Based on, exactly, wow. exactly. So, so it's their responsibility and I'm there to help find those kinks in the hose with them to get them up to that level they wanna be at. So if somebody wants to make 10 grand a month and you need to do 500 text messages. We, we have our KPIs through my um, uh, corporate, but and I know exactly what they are because we do millions of text messages throughout the country every month. So I, I know what they look like. And when somebody says, hey, I want to make this amount of money, then I tell them, this is what it takes. You said you want to be here. Where's the holdup? Is your holdup in, in that prospecting? Did you not send those out? Um, but if they did reach their goal, those one-on-ones become even better because then it's all congratulating. It's all like, you know, bringing them up and say, hey, you know what? You're 
way past your goals. We need to raise your goals here. You're making, you wanted to make 10, you're making 12. We need to move you up to like 15 or 20 because you know, you're, you're just, you're just co- floating at this point. But, but the one-on-ones, you, you really got to make it about that team member and help them achieve what they want to achieve. Not what, not what I want to achieve, what they want to achieve. And if you can do that as a team leader or as a business owner, I think that is, and each, again, each company does things different. I understand that. Mine is based off of these three things that my, my coach, my coach, Jacob, he's awesome. He has been in the business a while. He helps me a lot. He's kind of my GM as well. Uh, he helps me with my team uh, do things and he helps me. We all need help. Yeah. I, I don't care how successful you are. I, you can even be Jeff Bezos if, for, for honestly. I guarantee you as somebody, he's taken some advice from some people on certain things. Oh, for so sure. always be learning, always, you know, a um, couple books to recommend. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's dive into uh, some book recommendations. St- I, would, I would start off with the like switch. It's great for building relationships, but it's not just like in the business. The like switch helps with personal, family, your kids. Like that is like a must read book just to even start with just understanding people's emotions and things like that. Uh, second, the like, language, switch? the like switch, I forgot who the author author was, but, um, yeah, the like switch. Um, and then there's uh, never split the difference. Great Chris book. Voss, Chris Voss is awesome. That's when you start getting into negotiations, you know, your first thing is to set up the relationship. Second thing is then negotiations. I mean, it's, when it comes to business, business does become business at some point, no matter what. Um, that is a great book. And then um, I'm reading right now. Uh, I mean, I have a lot of others. And the third I would recommend too is, is um, oh, I forgot the name of it. It's by Robert Caldini. Um, I forgot the name. Slipped, it slipped my mind for a second. Robert Caldini, uh, The Influencer, right? I believe yeah, The Influencer. Uh, that's another great book. Just teaches a lot of different things. Uh, techniques and people's like uh how they think when they see sales and different ways that um people kind of lean towards when it comes to when they see things on sale or it's it's just, it's a great book but uh, yeah the influencer by robert caldini it's a great one can you repeat that one more time robert caldini what was it the, i believe it's the influencer influencer okay yeah. great great I love it, man. Awesome. So, Robert, where can they find you? How can they get a hold of you? Um, if they want to do a deal with you, if you want to deal with a deal with them, how, how can they get a hold of you, man? Two separate ways. I got um, two different companies you can reach out to me. Either one doesn't matter. NLS Homes. It's Robert at nlshomes.com for my email. Um, and then also at Keegley. If you want to send them over to Keegley, it's Robert at KeeglyNLSHomes.com. And my phone number is 702-383-5877. Love it, man. Robert, thank you so much, man. You dropped a lot of gems. I took a bunch of notes. I hope you guys took a lot of notes too. Uh, Guys, if you're you're in town, if you want to do deals with Robert and Keegley, uh, please reach out to him. Robert, thank you so much for uh, joining Real Estate Experts. Uh, Let's roll the intro. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks, Tyson. Thank you so much for tuning in. I have tremendous gratitude for our guests and you listening now for joining our mission of democratizing real estate education around the world. If you want to learn more from our experts, our mission, and get involved, then please visit realestateexperts.org to get started. Who knows, you might even be a guest on a future episode. That's awesome. Yes, sir. Hey, what's up, man? Thank you so much.